In this video, we're going to be looking at the newly released GPT-4 from OpenAI in the general. And then we're going to be doing a quick demo website, just like this. It's super easy now with GPT-4. And now we're going to be looking at it more detail in the research announcements from OpenAI. Pretty incredible stuff. Stay tuned. GPT-4 is OpenAI's most advanced system, producing safer and more useful responses. As, if we, as we scroll before, GPT-4 can solve difficult problems with greater accuracy. And then we get some examples. For example, with creativity. GPT-4 is more creative and collaborative than ever before. And here's a question to explain the plot of Cinderella. And you can just read it. It's pretty incredible. Let's go to visual inputs. Here we are. You can feed in GPT-4 API when you get access to the API images and ask questions about those images. What can I make with these ingredients? And then the output is, there are many options, and it gives you the options. And then you can probably ask for recipes for these options. But all of this information is being received from the image itself. And longer context, GPT-4 is going to be capable for up to 25,000 words or 32K tokens. But this is going to be depending on when you start apply when you apply for the API access. I think it says there that it can be anywhere from 8k to 32k tokens. But it is at least twice as much as the latest GPT 3.5 model. Second interesting fact is that GPT 4 surpasses Chat GPT in its advanced reasoning capabilities. Here we are inputting free available time both for Andrew and Joanne and asking what is a good start time for a 30 minute B meeting between Andrew and Hannah and Joanne. And ChatGPT mistakenly says that for start meeting starting at 4 p.m., but Andrew is only free from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. On the other hand, GPT-4 correctly says that the only 30-minute meeting available for all three of them is from 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. Now let's take a quick look at a demonstration I created. I've just asked GPT-4 model with my ChatGPT Plus subscription to, for it to create an HTML CSS files for a website, which is for EchoHive which does AI-assisted coding educational videos about family of GPT models in LangChain and more. There are three video files, 1.mp4 to 3.mp4. Put these videos nicely organized in a row, and it gave me both the HTML file and the CSS file. All I had to do was just put the videos in their appropriate directory, working directory, and I copy-paste the index.html and styles.html. I just modified the titles for the videos because it didn't know the titles since I modified the titles to one, two, three. And when we run this, as a matter of fact, let me go back to the earlier version of the CSS because we're going to do this one more time. And this is the output we get. It's really nice. The Colab AI is the coding educational videos. The video, the videos are watching. Maximize and minimize them. And then I want to make it more beautiful. And the second time around, I said, make it more beautiful and put the videos horizontally stacked. Give it a nice background color too. So when I copy the CSS code, it only updated the CSS, as you can see. Then I simply replace the CSS and I'm using live server. So that's why as soon as I save this file, it'll update the website and I'm running this locally. And here we go. This is, what we, this is what we get. This is pretty cool. It's incredible. This is the fastest I was able to get AI to generate code this quickly and this good. If you look at some of my really early videos. Anyway, so this is really useful. I want to show you that. The first one, my first video here is the useful AI link. Second one is LangChain using async support. And third one is to do chat with any YouTube video using GPT 3.5. I'll post the links to these videos in the description as well. I do have 20 plus project files and some blog posts for my Patreon supporters. I have three levels. Feel free to take a look and if you like, join. The AI virtual also allows you to communicate with me one-on-one. -on -one. I'll put the link in the description. Now let's do a quick deep dive with the post that OpenAI did with the research in mind. And this is their latest, this is their latest milestone and its capabilities are really displayed here. So there is a plethora of exams that they put GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 with vision and with no vision. We have to remember that GPT 4 in its API access it allows you to upload images, but you have to apply for API access. I'll put the link for the waitlist in the description. But as you see in these exams, GPT 3.5 didn't do, didn't do too shabby. It was really very good. But as you can see, the light green performance is GPT-4 with no vision. It's, very, it's doing very well. And GPT-4 with image input inputting is actually doing on top of extra performance. 
So this is pretty incredible. Here is the detailed examples of all the tests. There's also some other benchmarks. Out of these, I actually really enjoyed human eval. I'll probably make a video on this. A human eval, handwritten evaluation set. This is an evaluation harness for human eval problem solving data set. So this was, this was interesting. This program exists to run untrusted model generation code. Users are strongly, strongly encouraged to not to run the code outside of a robust security sandbox. So this is very cool if you're doing code generation and want to run it in a secure environment. I'll put the link in the description. There is also GPT for three shot accuracy across languages. It's really impressive. Let's take a look at these numbers. And the lowest number is 62% with Telugu. And visual inputs is where it gets really interesting. Now you can actually input examples. For example, here's daily meat consumption per persona graphic. You can just input and then ask GPT, what is the sum of the average daily meat consumption for Georgia and Western Asia? and ask it to do this step by step and it actually does it perfectly. It not only extracts the information out of this image, it also does the processing of the information perfectly. Next one is a, is a French part of a French answer question I1A, which is in French, but it has something to with heat conductivity, I believe. Anyway, but it can do this, obviously. This one is asking what is the unusual about this image and it answers the unusual thing about this image that a man is ironing clothes on an ironing board attached to the roof of a moving taxi. The fact that you can understand all this from just a simple image and use it as context to answer text question is really incredible. There are other examples. For example, now we are pasting three images, I believe, which is the part of Instruct GPT paper. And could you read and summarize it to me? And here it does that. Another example is why is this picture funny? Or can you explain this meme? And obviously, it says that sometimes I look at pictures of Earth from space and it's funny because this is just chicken nuggets organized in the shape of continents of Earth. It actually explains it perfectly well. Last examples, again, it's about meme relating to how to improve performance between statistical learning and neural networks. Take a look. And as we go down, it gives you more examples of other benchmarks. And it talks about limitations. I'll put this link in the description as well. This is some really interesting information if you want to read more about it. But I hope you enjoy this video and I'll be making more videos with GPT-4 and its capabilities in the future. Please join our Discord if you like to discuss these things with us. And feel free to support me on Patreon. I truly appreciate it. Take care.